what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. And today I'm going to do something that I have never, ever, 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 ever done on my channel. And that's review a super, super budget cheap knife. When I say cheap, we're talking 30 bucks. $29 on Amazon. Ah, uh, I... It's such a different world for me. I just don't, I really truly don't even know where to begin. This is the Remet Peacock. Remet is a brand that up until recently had a different brand name. It was an almost impronunciable name. I don't rem even remember what it was, but I remember seeing some, um, some knives that were made by them and it was this, really weird brand name and I'm like I I just I can't get into that because it doesn't definitely doesn't roll off the tongue but uh one thing that Remet has been doing lately is creating some buzz on YouTube working with a lot of different YouTube reviewers and getting their name out there, which is the smart thing to do. They have sat down. I'm going to take the uh, microfiber cloth out of the packaging here and wipe some of the excess oil off the blade. Oh, they also give you a tool, which looks like it's for adjusting the pivot and for removing body screws. Uh, well, I can be that dumb. Let's Let's... Not take it too far. All right. There is a lot of oil seeping out from that pivot. They've coated the blade. It's really, really, really oily. Okay. Now, maybe my finger won't slide off the flipper tab anymore. Or maybe it will. Okay. Now, so as I was saying, they have partnered up with a lot of different YouTubers to get their name out there and get their knives reviewed. And uh, they reached out to me recently and said, hey, we would love, uh, we've seen your channel, we'd love for you to review one of our knives and see what you think of it, give us some honest feedback. I don't really remember if they said honest feedback, but they said feedback. We would love to hear what you have to say. But you guys know me, I'm always going to be honest, that's the way it is. And... Uh, while I've seen some other YouTubers out there with a, a fancier looking titanium frame lock, excuse me, titanium button lock, that I thought that looked pretty interesting. They had shown me this, and I'm like, eh, I mean, okay, sure, I suppose. It's 100% not my style. There is nothing about this design that appeals to me on a personal level. But here's the thing. I don't always choose knives to review that I love because I have a very broad audience and you guys have a broad kind of sense of style. This may be exactly the kind of knife that you're looking for. The fiberglass composite handle reminds me a lot of Going back to the 1980s with Spyderco, Cold Steel, stuff like that, it really has that look and feel to it, which if you follow me for any length of time, you know I'm not a fan really of either brand. I think SOG also did handles like this as well. My God, there's, there's oil just everywhere on this knife. I can't get past how much friggin' oil there is. And with the water-based lube, what's great about that is that you can use it with any sex toy. All right, anyway. So I went into this honestly expecting to hate everything about this knife. I think it's visually unappealing. I really don't like this style of handle, this material. There was nothing about it that appealed to me as an individual. And then I got it and I opened it up and I felt the action and went... Huh. That actually flicks really, really good. 
It's really smooth. They took the time to build this to the right tolerances where everything just worked together. I'm thinking, man, for 30 bucks, it really shouldn't feel that nice. I mean, that is, it's friggin' glass smooth. And it's not a guillotine. It's not like we release the lock and get it past the detent and it just drops completely. It has a nice controlled near free fall. And it snaps open wickedly. So they did a really good job on the detent and the, uh, the inset. I'm sorry, I want to call it an inset tab lock, but it's really not. That is a full liner in there. That's a full steel liner. Uh, the, the tension on that lock, I mean, it's just perfect. They did a really, except for all the friggin' oil. You might be surprised to learn that one in three women under 30 need something slippery to help things slide and glide when they're having intercourse. And if you're over 50, well, virtually everyone, and I mean everyone, needs something to help them have more comfortable intercourse. They did a really good job on this. I didn't like the color. I didn't like the overall shape and design. I didn't like the, the fiberglass composite material. So I went, uh, I, I don't like to do negative reviews, but this is going to be a negative review. And then I got it in my hand and I played with it for a few minutes and went, there's something about it that's likable. I don't want to like this knife. I especially don't want to like a knife that's only $30. With all the money that I have invested in my personal collection, I don't think that I've personally bought or carried a knife in the past few years that was less than $500 or $400 maybe. Um, and having spent multi-thousands of dollars on knives... I have a certain expectation of what I should get for that money. I don't know what to expect out of a $30 knife. I would expect primarily that it's just a tool, that it's just going to cut and take some abuse. I have no reason to believe that this won't because they are using 9CR18 steel, 9CR18 MOV. It's not a steel that I am really familiar with. I don't own a single knife in that steel myself. But after watching guys like uh, Jared and, and, and Kevin or Lefty, I've heard a lot of good things about 9CR18 steel, that it actually holds up pretty well for a budget steel, that it does pretty good work. So I guess that was probably a really good choice for them to make. Oh, I don't want to like this knife. But I kind of do. Now, my first and only experience, if you can call it that, with Remet was watching um, Beard of Doom. If you go over to his channel, he's got a review up on a Remet knife. And he had actually test, uh, texted me one night. And he's like, hey, I got this this offer to, to review these knives, he goes, they're super, super budgety. He goes, I'm not sure I'm into that. He goes, so I'm going to have them send it and I'm going to do some torture testing on it and, and do ridiculous things and, and see how it holds up. I mean, he went in the back, I think he was, was hacking branches off a banana tree or something. I really, I don't recall, but I know he went to his backyard and just started abusing the knife that he had. I don't believe it was this one. I don't believe it was the peacock. And he couldn't destroy it. It kept doing everything that it was supposed to do. And he messaged me back. He's like, you know what? He goes, I have beat the tar out of this thing. And it keeps coming back and asking for more. He goes, I really can't complain. He goes, I think that was like a $40 knife, if I'm not mistaken. He goes, for the money that somebody's going to spend on that, he goes, I can't find a reason to complain about it. So I have no doubt that it's going to perform well. Just as far as looking at, at, at a tabletop review, just at the basics of the knife, once you get past the cheapness of the, the handle material, they kind of did everything right. It, perf it 
I want to say performs, but the the action feels really really good. Um, the edge feels really really prickly. It's a really really fine, really sharp edge. Everything's aligned the way it should be. There's no uh, lock stick. The blade is centered. Actually, let's take a, a better look at it up close because it looks like it might be. Yeah, it's it's leaning a little over toward the show side. It's not dead on perfect, but it's real, real close. You've got the option to use the flipper tab or the thumb studs. The thumb studs are not acting as blade stops. They're, they're just simply thumb studs. I think if there was one thing to actually pick apart on this and complain about... It's the sharpness of that liner lock. Just sitting here playing with it for the video, it's, it's already irritating my thumb. Actually, you can see that. So, you, you know I'm not making it up. It's definitely, definitely irritating my thumb just from unlocking it the, the, the couple dozen times that I have here in this video. But I think I'm doing it mainly because I'm enjoying the action of it. I'm enjoying feeling it open and close. It's, 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 they did a really good job on the action. The pivot tension, the, the, the lock tension, the detent. They did really, really well. So that makes me go, huh, I kind of want to reach back out to them and try that titanium button lock. Because... That's a more premium price point. It's a more premium built knife. So if they put that much care in such a cheap kind of throwaway price point, what did they do for a knife that's 10 times the price? Actually, I don't believe it's 10 times the price. Um, I think it's right around 200 if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I have to imagine they did a pretty damn good execution on that because here's a knife that by all rights, I should hate. I should be out here bashing the hell out of this thing. I should be the typical knife snob that goes, I wouldn't look at a $30 knife. Because quite honestly, I don't. I, I have never owned a $30 knife that I'm aware of. Um, it's not something, it's not a price point that interests me because the corners that are typically cut at that price point would take it out of contention for me. But here, I mean, they've done a really good job. It's, it's not like they went and did a back lock. They've got a liner lock on there. Um, I like the, uh, the grinds on this. Very, very thin, sharp, nice accent with the swedge up front. Very nicely done. No enormous billboarding. Just a simple remet name on this side. And then the uh, blade steel marking on this side. And that friggin' action, man. It's stupid. It's stupid how well they made this knowing that they were going to be making a cheap throwaway price point knife. And it doesn't even look like a gas station knife. It doesn't look like... I mean, they don't have like bats or skulls or anything ridiculous on here. They didn't run with the peacock name and, and draw a peacock on there or something. They... They worked with the materials they had, and they did a pretty damn good job. I mean, hell, at this point, even the color is kind of growing on me a little bit. It's not quite a Tiffany blue. It's not a sky blue. It's, but it is. It's it's an interesting. Maybe it's like a robin's egg. Would you call that robin's egg blue? Maybe. Either way, uh, damn it. Yeah, I guess it kind of grew on me a little bit. Um, obviously, you, you know, f just by knowing me and watching the videos over the years that I'm not, there, there's nothing about this clip that I'm ever going to like, but at that price point, do they have a lot of choices? I mean, a bent spring clip is pretty much all you're going to get for 30 bucks. So yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't pick it apart. I can't. I can't complain about it. They did a good job all the way around. All right, let's get into the specs. 
I kind of neglected to do my TLDW. I just kind of went straight into my thoughts on the knife. Um, overall length, 7.48 inches. A blade length of 3.07 inches. The blade somehow feels a little bit bigger than it is. Um, I would have guessed this was a three and a quarter inch blade, to be honest with you. Uh, again, made of 9 CR18 MOV. It's 120 thousandths thick on the blade stock. And the frame is a steel liner lock underneath fiberglass composite handles. And by the way, a fiberglass composite backspacer as well. All in all, I can't, as much as I want to complain, as much as I want to find issues with it, I really can't. So to Remet, um, thank you for reaching out. I think you did a pretty damn respectable job with the budget that you wanted to stay in. So I, I am interested to see across their varying price points how how well they did. Because if you could take a $30 knife that somebody like me should, you know, actually hate, and I kind of want to just keep sitting there playing with it, that's kind of that's kind of nutty. That's, that's crazy. Anyway, uh, I'm going to cut this short. I don't want to spend a half hour on a, a $30 knife, you know, a dollar a minute. Um, but I'll say this. If, if you're looking for something that you don't mind abusing and beating up and you don't care about uh, having it as a collector's piece or pocket jewelry or anything particularly fancy, maybe you just want a, a knife to throw into your toolbox and keep in there or in your glove box or on the boat, or saddlebags on your motorcycle, and you just kind of want to put it there, and you don't care, it's okay if you forget about it for a couple of years, because it's only a $30 investment, I, I'm going to have to say it, I would recommend the Remet Peacock. Is it going to be special in any way? No, not really. Um, it's I don't ever see this as being a collectible item, and it's not particularly flashy, but they did a good, clean job with the materials they chose to use in the budget they decided to be in. And honestly, at the end of the day, all a knife needs to do is cut properly, feel good in the hand, and uh, hopefully have a reasonably nice action so that you have a little bit of enjoyment out of it. And they did it. They, they did exactly what they set out to do. So kudos to them. A no-frills option in the uber-budget territory, the Remet Peacock. Thank you guys, as always, for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.